different advantage do you get from using the right tyre versus the wrong tyre? And how do you actually know which one's which in the first place? To find out, I have with me four very different pairs of tyres on four identical pairs of wheels, one gravel bike, one power metre, and several experiments up my sleeves. Not literally, of course, because uh, there's not much room in these. My biceps are so big. Coming up, we'll ride road and gravel and see what difference tread pattern and tyre width have on rolling resistance, braking distance and cornering speed. To make this video, we have teamed up with WTB. Now they have a huge spectrum of tires across all disciplines, but to my mind, they're kind of synonymous with gravel riding. They have been leading the way with gravel tire technology for longer than anyone. And they've got some legendary tires in their lineup. First up, we've got the Byway, which as you can see, has got a slick center tread, but with a little bit more tread on the outside. So from looking at it, you'd say, that's a fast rolling tire, but you get a little bit more traction when you start to lean the bike over on loose surfaces. This one is 40 millimeters wide, so that's kind of textbook gravel bike width. Then got two pairs of Riddlers. So one in a narrow 37 millimeter wide casing and then one in a wider 45 mil casing. So that we can also compare the difference in tire width in addition to just tread pattern. Now you'll see, again, from looking at this one, there's that really closely spaced center tread. So you'd think, well, that also would be faster rolling, although not quite as fast as the slick byway. But we have a lot more tread on the outside of this tire. So you'd think that that should give greater cornering traction. Finally, I've got a 42 mil wide Resolute, which is much more aggressively treaded for extra grip in loose conditions. And dare I say it, also mud. How is that one? going to stack up. All the tyres are set up tubelessly on Hunt's four season gravel disc wheel sets which are 20 millimetres wide internally and the tyre pressure that I'm running is actually going to vary from each pair of tyres because as a tyre gets wider you want to put less pressure in to get the right ride characteristics. So for me that means about 37 psi in the 37, about 35 psi in the 40, about 32 psi in the 42, and about 28 in the 45. First up, we're gonna check out rolling resistance on tarmac. So to find out, I'm gonna start at the top of that hill, let my brakes off, and then roll all the way down until I grind to a halt. Now, the more efficient the tire, the faster I will roll, and therefore the further I will go. Three, two, one, go. We're gonna need some really dramatic music now. Here we go! you edge of your seat stuff right there i hope you recover in due course now in all seriousness this test is not meant as a way of finding quantifiable data on rolling resistance but as a demonstration to show just how much difference your tire choice can make i think it's pretty clear i mean 10 meters might not look like much now but bear in mind only went 200 meters imagine if the test was a kilometer and then imagine if it was 200 kilometers. Although it doesn't bear thinking about how long that would take. Five runs each, four pairs of tires. Anyway, it seems pretty clear that on tarmac, 
the difference between these tires is enough that you could feel it in every pedal stroke. And a slicker tire or one with really closely spaced tread is one that will roll significantly faster. And it also seems like our wider tires that we're running at lower pressures are losing out again here. And that is because the tire carcass is deforming as we're rolling along, and that is adding considerably to our rolling resistance. Next up, we've got rolling resistance, but on gravel. So taking what we've just learned from tarmac, it seems like tread pattern is really important. But how's that gonna translate onto the loose stuff? And also now we've got bumps and therefore vibration going through the bike, how are the lower pressures afforded by wider tire carcasses gonna influence our results? The test here is slightly different. So rather than rolling down a hill, I'm gonna ride down this gravel trail at the same speed each time, but record my average power. And what is the difference gonna be? Okay, so these results have, I'll admit, taken me a little bit by surprise. I thought this sort of almost slick center tread of the byway would leave it out in front again, but no. So I paced it almost perfectly. I finished plus or minus half a second. And yet these, the 42 Resolutes and the 37 mil wide Riddlers finished within one watt of each other. Yeah. Now, admittedly, the 45 Riddler was 11 watts less efficient, but I did also pace that not quite so well, so I was two seconds faster on that one, but presumably, if you extrapolate that out, it would still leave it marginally less efficient. So, what is going on? I don't know, but I presume that the additional resistance that you get from riding over the loose stones is greater than any kind of loss of efficiency from tread pattern. Although, let's be clear here, none of these tyres are tractor tyres. They have all been designed to roll quickly. They're gravel tyres, that's kind of what they're all about. Even the more heavily treaded Resolute, because it's got that line of nobbles right down the middle of the tyre. In fact, actually, this would probably be a good point to have a little bit of a lesson in knobs. So as your tire rolls along, new rubber constantly meets the ground. Now on a slick tire, that transition is unobstructed, almost seamless. But as you add knobs onto the tire, they create obstructions that need to be overcome, which requires energy. So with lots of small, closely spaced knobs on a tire, the obstructions are minimal, and so the energy loss is also minimal. However, as the knobs get taller and further apart, their impact becomes much greater. But you can see in the case of the Resolute, so even though the tread is deeper, that center line of knobs minimizes the impact they have and therefore minimizes the drag. However, seemingly when you add gravel into the mix, it just offsets the differences that tread patterns make. So I guess the harder pack the trail, the more important it is to get a slicker tread in order to get those efficiency savings. And what about that wider Riddler then, our outlier in this experiment? Well, presumably the lower pressure that I'm running in that tire at the moment is still causing the tire to lose efficiency because the casing is deforming as I roll along. And yet this track isn't rough enough for me to get any advantage from its vibration absorbing qualities that you then get with a lower pressure. Now at this point, I also think it's worth saying that the right tire isn't necessarily just about choosing tire width and tread pattern. There are other things that you might wish to consider without wishing to overcomplicate it too much. But tubeless is something that, well, I've said it before and I'll say it again, off-road is absolutely brilliant. But depending on the terrain where you live, you might also want to consider a bit of extra puncture protection from your tire. Now I say this in part because these tires that WTB have sent through have their new carcass on. So they're up from 60 threads per inch to on 20 threads per inch, but there's also a really thin nylon layer inside the carcass that WTB says improves puncture protection. So by 33% at the sidewall and 17% at the tread. Right then, we are back to our tests and it's the third and final one. 
So far, we have seen that clearly tread pattern makes a big difference to your speed and your overall efficiency on tarmac, whereas the picture was a lot less clear off-road. However, straight line speed is one thing, but you also need to be able to corner and brake. So to find out how much of an effect tyre choice has on that, I'm about to do a lot of both because I'm about to hit a short, very fun section of man-made single track. Now, it is loose gravel over hard pack. It's very smooth. It's quite twisty. Let's see what difference it has. a much more fun experiment that one <sighs> well firstly i gotta say all four pairs of tires down there were cracking good fun but as the tire got wider and the tread got more aggressive i felt a little bit less sketchy i had more confidence and i went faster so our narrower slicker tires the byway was the slowest followed by the 37 riddler then four seconds faster was the big fat 45 mil wide Riddler. And then the Resolute 42 mil wide was the fastest one, two seconds quicker than that. So what does it show? Well, certainly you can feel the extra confidence that you get on rougher, more technical terrain from the lower pressures and the wider tires. It's smoother, you get more grip, you get more control. And then also when it gets looser, the more aggressive tread also gives you more confidence and more traction. So if your riding is at the more technical end of gravel, you've got loads of really loose, deep gravel, then having something a little bit more heavily treaded is gonna give you a bit more confidence and help you go a little bit faster. Crikey, there is a lot going on there, isn't there? So let's try and distill it down in some key take-home messages. Firstly, all four tires here were fast and were cracking good fun. Secondly, you can clearly see that certain types of tires have clear strengths, whereas others are stronger in other fields. And so how do you know which one to choose then? You need to work out what gravel riding you do, what surfaces you ride on, and where you want to have the most fun. So if you ride a lot on tarmac, then having a slicker tire like the Byway will help your gravel bike feel zippy like a road bike, but yet you can also clearly see that it's possible to ride it on rougher, narrower single track. Now, if you regularly ride big rocks or roots or rougher gravel, then a wider tire is gonna help you go faster. But again, as we've seen, there is a clear trade-off that when it gets smoother and when you go faster, the wider cast that deforms more, and indeed, as boring as it sounds, the aerodynamic penalty of a wider tire means that you don't go quite as fast. And that's probably, I guess, why most people seem to strike on this sweet spot of about 40 to 42 millimeters wide on their gravel tire. And lastly, if you ride really loose gravel and you've got loads of technical sections, steep ups, steep downs, that's when a more heavily treaded tire is gonna pay dividends. It's gonna give you more confidence and it's gonna let you have more fun there. However, as I said, for you to choose the right tire, you need to analyze exactly how much time you spend on different surfaces and then where you want to have the most fun. Now at this point, I've got to say, I'd be super interested to know what type of gravel tires you run. Do you go for a slicker or a semi-slick or a heavily treaded tire? And what width have you struck on as well? So make sure you get involved in the comments section down below. And also give this video a big thumbs up if you've enjoyed it. I have, I've had a whale of a time. <laughs>